Welcome back here on episode two of TSL today. Giovanni Heater joined alongside Nick Brown and our guest today, the voice of the women's basketball team and the baseball team at Virginia Tech for Learfield, Evan Hughes, who is also the former podcast host for the Tech Sideline podcast. Evan, great to have you in the studio. How you doing, man? I'm great. Uh, this is the first week of TSL today, right? Yeah, it is. First week? I, I'm yeah. honored to be on the first week. And when I hosted the podcast, I sat in that chair for a long time where Nick is. I occasionally sat where Gio is. I've never sat in the Chris Coleman chair before. Right. <laughs> so I can officially say I have sat in all three podcast chairs on set. But no, it's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, we can't thank you. I mean, you paved the way for us uh, and everything you did in the SMA program and, and beyond. So uh, we can't thank you enough. You know how much you mean to us. So uh, thanks for coming on. Virginia Tech women's basketball. Wow, does Kenny Brooks have a crew. They're uh, picked to finish second in the ACC. Elizabeth Kitley is picked to uh, be the reigning ACC player of the year and defend her crown and run it back and do it again this year. I mean, it's got to be a treat to be able to be on the sideline and call those games. I cannot wait. I have been counting down the days. I've been telling the staff over at women's basketball, there's like the easy button that you could hit. <laughs> like two months ago, that fast forwards me to November 7th. I would have hit that months ago because I can't contain my excitement. I, I just I can't wait to see this team take the floor. There obviously is a ton of excitement around what is back, right? Like I'm excited to see uh, what steps Liz can take coming off a season when she nearly averaged 20 points and 10 rebounds because I know she's been working really hard and um, adding more different moves to her low post game. I'm really excited to see Georgia Amor take another big step forward in the scoring department, but you know it's hard not to look at the two uh, significant transfers they brought in, Ashley Owusu and Taylor Soul, and seeing them in practice, really fun to watch. They have fit in really well with the system. They've gelled right away. I, I think... When you bring in two players like that, it helps that you have such a veteran-led squad with so much experience. And I think Hokie fans are going to be in for a treat this year to watch them play. You mentioned it earlier that you know there's going to be a bunch of potential top 10 matchups in Castle. They've got a couple of uh, great tests in the Bahamas early. They've got the Jimmy V Classic. So they're going to have they're at Tennessee At Tennessee's. Uh, that's on ESPN2 uh, against the Volunteers. So they're going to have opportunities against the best of the best. And uh, uh, th this team has the chance, in my opinion, to go down as the the best in program history this year. Wow. Yeah, so Kenny Brooks sat here and he talked about the program and getting those transfers. Really, what has been, I guess, your point of view uh, since you've got that insight? How has he been able to be able to be the spot where these big time transfers because I mean this isn't just you know your run of the mill transfer portal athletes you're bring, you're bringing someone from Maryland who's pre they hosted last year in the NCAA tournament all American yeah exactly all American Ashley Wusu and then Taylor Salt first team all ACC how is he pulling these top dogs out of the transfer portal to Virginia Tech and how has he made this place the place to be well let's start with on the court first right I think you have seen the improvement of the program year by year since he's gotten this job right so it's on paper. Like Last year, going to an ACC semifinal, which has never been done before in the program history, um, multiple NCAA tournament berths. I think you've also seen transfers come in in the past and have success, right? Like Lydia Rivers is a player that is mm -hmm. uh, very well respected in the program who played at Radford and played a big role in this team a couple of years yeah. ago. Taj Cole was a transfer who started a career at Louisville, then went to Georgia. She went. Uh, she's from the 804, finished her career at Virginia Tech and flourished in her lone season in Blacksburg. So I think for an Ashley Owusu, for a Taylor Soul, you have seen transfers come in and have success. So that's a check. Coaches talked about this too. Players want to play with Liz Kitley, Kayla King, Georgia Amor. I mean, that's a fun group to play with, and, and Kayana Trailer and, and everybody else as well. So uh, I think they had that going for them. And then the other part that I try and convey as much as I can on the air, and I hope that Hokey fans really understand this, is that um, it is such a family atmosphere in that program. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably listening right now and saying, okay, everybody says it's a family atmosphere. And it is such a cliche. And Funny. I don't like talking about cliches. <laughs> but think about it from this perspective that Kendall Brooks played for Coach Brooks when he got the job, right? Kendall Brooks did a... Uh, was huge in helping lay the foundation for what this program would look like. And then Chloe Brooks, his middle daughter, has played for him, right, and is still on the team. Coach knows um, what it's like to be around, um, you know, uh, girls the same age that he's coaching, right? I mean, and and Kendall and Chloe are super close with a lot of the players. So, I um, mean, Coach has talked about how for it, they'll just be over at his house and he doesn't know that, hanging out with <laughs> – and, and, it, and it starts at the top, right? So it is such – 
such a family atmosphere and it starts at the top with coach from the coaching staff to everybody off the court everybody loves being around each other Mm -hmm. with that team the chemistry is super super strong and when you've been together for multiple years now right and you have that chemistry both on and off the court that can only help. So that's another thing that's just evident to me. Okay. How would Ashley, how would Taylor, Clara Ford, those transfers fit in? I mean, right away, no issues. And by the way, Taylor soul, one of the best personalities of any tech (laughs) athlete here at Virginia tech right now, coach says she might run for mayor one day of Blacksburg (laughs) and she has my vote. She has the personality. She's great. Um, And she brings a ton of vocal leadership to this team. Um, She's a tone setter. And that was something that stood out to me. The first practice that I went to in the off season, first time that I saw Ashley and Taylor and tech uniforms was, I mean, just seeing how confident Taylor soul was to lead and be a vocal leader. That's not easy to come in. Right. Yeah. And especially when you have Liz and Georgia and Kayla and KT and Demo and all these players that have been here for so long, she had no issues coming in and just stepping into that vocal leadership role. So, so keep an eye on that as the season progresses as well. A season ago, uh, Virginia Tech ended up falling in the ACC tournament to NC State. Could never really get over that hump last season and, and take down the Wolfpack, who are obviously a very great team. And then uh, it really kind of disappointed in the NCAA tournament with a, a first-round exit. So how does this team improve upon that fantastic regular season, really big win against North Carolina, without two of your studs in Kayla King and obviously Elizabeth Kitley in the ACC tournament, then kind of started to fizzle out a little bit towards the the end losing their last two ball games um how do they kind of take that next step this season in 2022 yeah unfortunate right with with injuries right that that hurts right with Kayla King your best on ball defender she goes out AC term and then Liz is I mean Virginia Tech was down I think six going into the fourth quarter against NC State in that uh ACC semifinal without those two I mean you wonder, right, what it would have been like right. if you had those two on the floor. And then, I mean, Florida Gulf Coast, right, a team that was ranked 23rd in the AP poll, who was a 12 seed. I mean, and Liz Kitley, people forget, scored 45 points in that game, which I think is the second most in the first round of an NCAA tournament game on the women's side, which is crazy. I think this is where you're going to see Virginia Tech take another step forward. I thought last year they were really good defensively. I think this has the chance to be one of the best Kenny Brooks teams from a defensive standpoint, and he's mentioned that. Yes, they can score. We know what Liz can do. We know what Ashley Owusu can do from a scoring standpoint. Georgia Amor is a very underrated defender. She's unreal. Real. I mean, yes, from an offensive standpoint, from a facilitation standpoint, from a scoring standpoint, she's great. Her defending doesn't get enough credit. Kayla King is known as the security blanket for Coach Brooks. She is the team's best on-ball defender, right? He talks about how... Uh, they they hunt in packs, right? It's not just 1v1 defending. He even said at the ACC tournament last week, he's proud of the fact they're at the bottom of the conference in steals. That's not what he wants his team to be about defensively. They need to defend together as a group. Kayla King leads the way there. Taylor Soule, really good defender. Really great on-ball defender. It's going to be really tough for teams to score against her in the low post. And, oh, by the way, you've got Liz Kitley, who is, I believe, top five in the country in blocks last year. And that's another part of Liz's game that I don't think gets enough credit is her defensive side. So this team will be able to score at will, but they're not just an offensive team. To answer your question of what they'll do this year to take another step forward, I think it's the experience of being together another year. They're older, they're senior-led, but their defense is going to win them a lot of games this year. I wanted to uh, just touch on some of the big games this year. We know them. We know the games. But I know a couple fans probably don't know uh, these big games. Uh, What are some that you are excited mainly for? And what should fans be? All right, I'm circling my date here. I got to go to Castle Coliseum. This date, this date, and this date. Well, you know, it starts off. They're going to have some marquee games uh, on the road first, right? So they've got those three games at Castle over the first week and a half of the year. Then they go down to the Bahamas. They've got the defending SEC champions, Kentucky, who beat... Um, the eventual national champion, South Carolina, in that SEC title game. So they've got Kentucky, and they've got Missouri, a team that made the WNIT last year, um, building towards being an NCAA tournament team. So, I mean, two really good teams in the non-conference. We talked about Tennessee. I believe they were preseason picked fifth in the AP poll. So those are three games right off the bat. But I think a couple to keep your eye on. I don't know if you have the schedule in front of you, Nick. Notre Dame, I want to say, is like second week of December, maybe or the first week of December. Maybe that's Boston College. No, you got it. Yeah, December 18th. December 18th against Notre Dame. I know it's close to the Christmas holiday, but that is a game 
that you should circle on your calendar. Notre Dame, uh, a top 15 team preseason in the AP poll. They've got a lot of returning players, headlined by Olivia Miles, who was a really good guard last year. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be a really big test. And that's where it's kind of interesting, right? Because you're, you're going back and forth from ACC play. They've got Boston College, Notre Dame. Then you've got some non-conference games sprinkled in before you get into full ACC action in early January. So, so to me, I think that, yes, while Tennessee gets a ton of attention, the Bahamas gets a ton of attention, to me, that Notre Dame game is going to be a marquee one in Castle. And, oh, by the way, um, <laughs> January 1st, I believe, is New Year's Day, North Carolina comes to Castle Cows. I I remember taking off my headset (laughs) in Greensboro. You were there. Yeah, you were there. We yep. called, we, we you called both, that you game both together. Called so you guys called it for thirty-four. Three of us. Yeah. And I remember taking my headset off and thinking to myself, "Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for Tech UNC next year." Just, <laughs> I mean, how amazing yeah. that game ended. And there's, you, you know, there's no doubt that North Car- North Carolina, I'm sure, has that date circled on their calendar as well. So I can't wait for the Tar Heels and the Hokies to get that. That's probably one of my favorite games on the schedule, that first one in Castle. Nick, we might have to run that back and uh, hop on the call for that. I'm fine with that. (laughs) Nebraska, too, December 1st. You know what? That's another great point. So before... The Christmas holiday. That's you've the got three days before Tennessee too. That that's right. The same week. Wow. That's one heck of a week. And you, the men's team plays UNC that week. No, oh, do they really? There you go. Yeah, so you've got Missouri. You've got Kentucky. You've got Nebraska, who's a team who could win the Big Ten. Yeah. Tennessee, Notre Dame, Boston College, <laughs> before the Christmas holiday. That so absurd. that's a really Merry real, Christmas. Mer- <laughs> there you go. Ho, ho, ho. Kenny Brooks is Santa this year. <laughs> those, those are going to be some really big games. Uh, Nebraska's one. I think it's another one too. You know, coach Brooks is six and zero in the ACC big 10 challenge. Wow. So <laughs> hoping to make it seven. zero this year against, uh, against Nebraska as Nick holds up seven. Yes. So I'm not saying it. Oh, you said it. No, <laughs> Evan, Evan, last uh, little bit here for you. Just wanted to get your opinion on the AP poll, how some teams in the AP poll are ranked higher than Virginia Tech, who sits at 13. And then when you look at the ACC media poll, Virginia Tech picked to finish second. Uh, UNC's ahead of them in the AP, kind of how all that shook out. And then your your message to Hokie Nation to get out, show up, support this women's basketball team, and, and jam-pack Castle Coliseum for some really big games. Well, I think the AP voters did a good job of recognizing how deep the conference is, right? For a long time, the ACC, there were two teams that really dominated, right? And it was North Carolina State or Louisville and then Notre Dame, right? Notre Dame's been good for a long time. The minute that they came into the ACC, they've been the best of the best. And I thought Muffet McGraw said it best on ACC PM this week when all of the ACC preseason awards and accolades came out. She said this might be the deepest the conference has ever been. She brings up a great point that the conference champion this year might have four, five, or six losses when in the past it's been one or maybe two. And that's because... Those five teams, and I think they got it right. There's no doubt. Uh, Louisville, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Those are going to be the five teams that draw a ton of attention. Miami made the ACC championship game last year, and they're sixth. And then how can you forget about Georgia Tech, one of the best defensive teams in the country? They're in the middle as well. So long-winded way of saying, you know, I I think at this point, uh, the preseason poll, in my opinion, a lot of that is based off of last year's results. Haven't played any games yet. I think they did a great job of getting – those five teams, the recognition they deserved, five of them being in the top 13. Um, and a lot of them are going to be tested early uh, early in the season. So I, But I, I think the ACC rankings, though, I, I personally, I like that. I mean, Louisville's a, a Final Four team from a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Tech being number two. I mean, there's no reason. To, and they're deserving of all those points they got of those first-place votes. When you've got two All-Americans in your projected starting lineup, and Georgia Amor, Kayla King, I, I don't think we talk enough about Kiana Trailer coming off the bench, by the way, who averages double figures and is, you know, was an all Big Ten performer at Purdue, would be starting at 95% of schools around the country. But it goes to show her unselfishness, the willingness to be the, my prediction, she'll be the sixth player of the year in the conference when it's all said and done. Um, anyways, it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> conference games this year will be very fun. And that's the message of Hokie Nation. I know, I know Coach Brooks has, um, really harped on it but Hokie fans make a difference inside of Castle Coliseum the there were two games that stick out to me most last year that were super loud the Tennessee game last year in early December yep um Tennessee traveled really well for that game but the Hokie fans came out too and then the North Carolina State game in February when there were I believe over 4,000 people here and that came down the wire 
if if Hokie fans are able to replicate that same kind of environment for the North Carolinas and the North Carolina State and all of those games, uh, it, it does make a difference. I think Tech last year lost maybe, I think it was just two games at home last year, the NC yep. State game and then the year in Tennessee, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So Castle is a special place. It gets very loud. And uh, I, I, I hope to see many, I, and I think we will. I think it's been really cool to see the fandom and the fan base of women's basketball grow yeah. over the now seven years that Kenny Brooks has been the coach. And you're a great person that knows that. I mean, living <laughs> in Blacksburg, you've seen that grow. Yeah. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for being on with yeah. us today. Episode two of TSL Today. And uh, can't wait to hear you on the call for Virginia Tech Women's Basketball. November 7th, mark the calendars. That is uh, the opening contest for the Hokies. Thanks so much, Evan. Thanks for having me. One quick note. Proud of you guys. Proud of this new show. Fantastic. Kudos to Will and Chris for investing more in the SMA program uh, and giving you guys this platform. I hope to be back. And lastly, I just want to shout out Jake Lyman, who's producing the yeah, best man. podcast producer and the host in the land. Um, proud of this guy, Vanderbilt women's basketball voice. So proud of him. So TSL, show him some love. But thanks, guys. Proud of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We'll have Evan on uh, as soon as uh, women's basketball gets back underway. I'm sure we'll have him on again. But for now, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we got Virginia Tech trivia for you. So stay tuned. It's episode two, TSL Today.